A bunch of people have been asking me lately, how long should I let my mash, my wash ferment for? How long should I let the ferment go for? And it's kind of the wrong question. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is still at the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. All right guys, so like I said in the intro, people have been asking me quite a lot. It's a steady barrage of questions asking how long to let my mash ferment for or variations on the topic. You know, I, I let it ferment for a week, but it's still bubbling. Should I let it go for longer? You know, all of these sort of things. And honestly, guys, it's the wrong question. Having a prediction of time ahead of time, sure, for planning, I get it. You know, you, you want to be able to know, you want to be able to know I've got a long weekend coming up. That's when I want to run the still. How long before that should I put the mash down? I, I get it. What I'm saying is that <laughs> fermentation is relying, it's us relying on yeast. This little single celled organism that's gonna do what it's gonna do. And all we can do is wrangle it and coax it in the right direction. So the answer is your fermentation is done when it's done. So the real question, the question you should be asking yourself is how do I know when fermentation is finished? You're gonna see a whole lot of weird answers out there. I'm here to tell you that they're all, they're not bollocks, they're just unreliable. <laughs> for one way or the other. There's only really one way, one way to know for sure. Here are a few of the traps that people might tell you. Uh, look for signs of fermentation, sure. Yeah, like that's great. If you see signs of fermentation, it's still fermenting. Problem is, there's a whole lot of situations where you're gonna see nothing. It's gonna look like absolutely nothing's happening, but it's still ticking away slowly. So those signs of fermentation might be a cloudy wash. They might be a croisin on top, which is basically, you know, where the yeast and the bubbly bits come up to the top of the, to the top of the fermentation. Airlock activity. So, you know, bubbles popping out the top of your airlock if you're using them. Yes, they can be a fairly good indication that fermentation is still happening, but there's even, even instances like fermentation has totally stopped, but now, um, for whatever reason, it's a warmer day, a hotter day than it was yesterday, it's starting to warm up again. You can get off-gassing happening where the CO2 comes out of suspension because it's getting warmer, and it'll look like fermentation because there's bubbles coming out of your airlock. You know, there are situations where these things happen. So, the only way, the only way to know for sure if fermentation is finished is to track the gravity of the fermentation. Specific gravity is a measure of how dense a liquid is compared to water in, in most cases. For everything that we're doing anyway, that's what we're looking at. So, how the hell do we know what the gravity of a wash is? Well, we've got a couple of tools for that. Let me show you. The first is a trusty hydrometer. If you do not have one of these, buy one. Now, it is hands down the most helpful um, accessory, I guess you would call it. It is not 100% necessary. You can make distilled spirits or beer without one of these guys, but it is just so much help. It takes so much headaches out of the situation. Now, this is a relatively cheap one. This is a relatively cheap one. I can't even find the brand on there, but, but I will leave some links down below in the description. You can pick cheap ones up like these. I don't know. I think the last one I got was like 16 bucks or something. Now these ones from Brewing America are a little more expensive. But if, uh, if things like them being made in America as opposed to China, which to be honest is where most of the things are made, are important to you, that and quality and just sort of presentation and the way that they turn up packed beautifully, support, so on and so forth. If, if you're into those sort of things, I think they're well worth the price. Full disclaimer, uh, Brewing America did send these to me because they saw <laughs> that no matter how good you make a glass test jar, Jesse can break it, as you guys have probably seen in my, in my recent videos. But the general way that these things work is that you take a sample, you put some liquid in here, you drop this bad boy in there, you make sure that liquid is around about 20 degrees Celsius. You see where this floats in the water and you take a reading off the side of it. Now that is a super crash course on these things. I do have another video uh, dedicated to, you know, exactly how to use these things properly. I'll put a link up above for that. It might be getting a little old. If you think it's a little old, and uh, not my best work. I hear you. Um, let me know and I'll, I'll see about doing an updated version of that. This video is not really a, exactly about how to use a hydrometer. It's about why to use a hydrometer and how it's helpful for us for distilling. So 
moving on. Now it is helpful before we get into this to have an idea of rough numbers that are normal for different types of ferments. So for example, a sugar wash is going to ferment out to about one or actually slightly below one. So as the yeast converts the sugar into carbon dioxide and alcohol, we're taking a very, very dense liquid, you know, water plus sugar is quite dense, and we're turning it into water plus alcohol. Alcohol is actually lighter than water, so that's why we can get down to a gravity that is less dense than water. Next up, things like all grain whiskies. Uh, we're not normally going to be able to ferment out all of the sugar because the mash process is going to create sugars that are unfermentable as well. So getting a gravity somewhere between 1.002 up to about 1.008 is totally normal for a all grain whiskey. And then lastly, things like rum. So if you're using molasses, you're gonna be putting a whole lot of unfermentable sugar into your wash, depending on the type of rum you're making, depending on the type of molasses. Um, that is so variable depending on what you're making and the ingredients you're making. But if you're using a big, dirty, great, big, honking blackstrap recipe, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like 1.02 uh, as a gravity at the end of fermentation. Now, things like uh, the type of yeast that you use will affect this. If you have a yeast that just chews through everything, you're going to be slightly on the lower side of those ranges. If you let your fermentation start to sour because of wild yeast and bacteria, that can push the gravities lower as well. Um, but it's kind of like a ballpark range of what to expect. And the reason I give you those numbers is back to this guy. So you can literally just pop this in your fermenter if you want. I do it all the time for stuff that I'm going to distill. I would never do it for beer, but uh, for distilled spirits, it's cool. Wait until you see signs of fermentation stop. Pop this thing into the wash or take a sample and take a reading. Wait for a day or two and come back and take a reading again. Now, if those two readings are the same over the period of a couple of days, fermentation stopped. Fermentation can stop for two reasons. One, something went wrong. Two, fermentation's actually finished. <laughs> so that's the reason that I gave you those target numbers. So if I was fermenting out a sugar wash and it stopped at one point, Two, I would know damn sure that there's something wrong. Either I screwed up on the recipe side or fermentation hasn't actually finished, it's just got stuck. The same if I was fermenting a all grain whiskey and it started and I don't know, let's pick some numbers. 1.07 and it fermented out to 1.025. I'd probably be thinking that that's a stuck fermentation. If however that same ferment went down to 1.005, I'm thinking it's probably done. So, the too long didn't read guys. Wait until you get steady numbers in the range of what you're expecting. So if you're expecting a wash to ferment out somewhere around one, and it gets down to, you know, 1.001, .001 and it stays there for three days, fermentation's done, and it's time to get that thing in the still. So if you don't have one of these things guys, I really hope that you can understand why getting one is a really good idea. It takes the myth, it takes the just not knowing out of a lot of things. And if you're going to approach a seasoned brewer or distiller and ask, you know, to, to get their help troubleshooting a fermentation or a recipe, the first thing they're gonna ask you, you know, after the recipe itself is uh, data points, numbers that you've taken from the fermentation with one of these guys, cool? You can use the links down in the description below. Now it's not gonna cost you anything, I promise you there are affiliate links. Essentially what that means is that uh, you buy the way you would anyway, it's just that the people you're buying it off give me a little kickback for sending you their way. So if you choose to use those, I'd thank you very much. If not, that's cool too. A super quick note on these little bad boys, refractometers. Yes, you can use these uh, to do this as well. Are they as good? Not really, uh, and here's the reason why. This measures the actual density of a liquid. That's what it does. This measures the refractive index of a liquid. And the problem is that when the liquid has uh, alcohol, water, and sugar in it, this gets all screwy. It does all sorts of weird things. And the only way to really get true readings with this is to have a really accurate starting gravity, take a reading at you know, what some point during the fermentation and then use a calculation or a calculator to give you the real number. Uh, so while yes, they are an awesome tool, be aware of that trap. Anyway guys, anyway, 
I know this one was a fairly uh, straightforward sort of technique based video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it, it helps a few people out out there. Uh, I know this stuff can be painful, you know, if you're not sure what you don't know and you just can't get over that next hump in the hobby. I get it guys, I get it. Anyway, like always, this has been a blast. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share it around with anyone else that you think might enjoy it and I'll catch you next time. See ya.